Well, good morning. My name is uh, Fari. I'm one of the pastors here, and I'm here with Pastor Brad. Hello. Well, here we are. Four keys to winning your battles. Yeah. So... We are to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. That's what Paul said in, in the letter to the church in Ephesus in chapter 6. Now, how do we know if we're standing in our own power or in God's power? How do we distinguish that? Because sometimes, you know, we, we think we're actually standing in God's power. That's the first point, stand in God's power. But then sometimes we're not. So how do we, how do we distinguish that? I think the biggest differentiation between, you know, your power or God's power is, is it in line with God's will? And generally, in the revealed word of God, uh, the story that we're talking about, that Joshua was standing in God's power because God himself said, hey, Joshua, I'll be with you. I was with Moses, but don't worry, I'll be with you as well. And that's a theme that goes out through the entire Bible, is that this idea that God is with us, that God is in us by now as believers in Jesus, the spirit of Jesus Christ is in us, the Holy Spirit. And when we're living our lives that align with the word of God, we know we're always, we'll always know that it's, we're standing in God's power. If we're standing for truth, if we're standing for righteousness, if people are going a different way and we by, we just know that's not the way we're supposed to go. That's wrong. That's morally, uh, you know, gray. I'm not so sure about that, but I can be sure about what God's word says. And that's where that power comes and the authority comes in as well. That's good. And uh, it's supernatural, right? Because it doesn't come from our own selves. It doesn't come from within, regardless of what people tell you, the div divinity in you. No. God is separate. He's holy. He's created us. He's our creator, and he gives us the power. The power doesn't come from within yourself. Uh, you yourself, you're powerless, and uh, we need God's power in order to actually accomplish great things. And one of those things, like you said, again, to follow God's word, we need his power. And the way that we know, you said, well, is whether we are standing in God's power and doing what he wants us to do is if we're following his will, which is revealed in the Bible, because a lot of people ask us, I don't know, you've had people come and tell you, what is God's will for me? Uh, yeah, all the time. Read the Bible. I mean, <laughs> I it's, really Bible. it's really funny. Why are you funny. asking me, man? You got your Bible right there. <laughs> like, come on! It's really funny whenever, and you, of course, have had this conversation many times. We've joked about it. But when people come to us, like, I just need to hear from God. I just need a word from God. It's like, well, hey, when's the last time you've cracked open your Bible? It's like, well, I, you know year ago. <laughs> it's like, I read it at church once. It was just like, well, God actually put a lot of effort into us having the scripture. He inspired, you know, over 30 authors for, you know, over 1800 years to tell one continuous story of redemption and salvation. There's a lot about God's will and his will for your life and how you're supposed to live. It, it's kind of in there. We say we base our lives on this book. We should maybe take a look at it. That's it. And this is, again, not to say that you can't come to the pastors. I know there's different giftings that God has. <laughs> People are like, I ain't calling Basafari ever again. He's going to mock me live. No. Um, this is about you. You can definitely, of course, that, what, that's why we're here. Pastors are here. we gifted to teach and to explain and expound. Absolutely. But then we also each individually have to go into the word, study it, and read it, and believe it. Like, we don't go just to, you know, Pastor Dave and say, Pastor Dave, tell us, you know, what God's word says. Uh, of course, he does. Uh, he teaches us every week, but we also go into it every day, and we, we expound on it, and we read it, we study it hard. So, Absolutely, and I think the point is, we're led by the Holy Spirit, and we talk a lot about that in church, but um, we tune our spirit to be able to hear the Holy Spirit through the Bible because the Holy Spirit sounds like Scripture. And so when we're fluent in the language of Scripture, we become fluent in the language of the Holy Spirit because he inspired the Bible. And so we're able to recognize, okay, is this the Holy Spirit or is this just my imagination? We, we're like, oh, I have tuned my, my spirit to hear what God's voice sounds like through his word. That's it. That's really... Uh, well put, Pastor Brad. And yeah, so if you say that you feel led to do something by the Holy Spirit and it goes against God's word, 
It's wrong. This what that wasn't Holy Spirit. I don't know what it was, but um, <laughs> you run away. Uh, so you want to go run to the Word and say, okay, this is how I'm feeling, or this is what I feel like I should do. This is line up with God's Word, and then obviously we have the we talk about the five CSs, you know. Yeah, go to Alpha. If you don't know what the five CSs are about, in two weeks, we're learning about the CSs. We talk a lot about the Alpha course, yep. a way to understand and discern how God guides our lives. How Come to God Alpha. Guide us? That's a great uh, session to be part of. And then obeying God's principles. Obviously, we know, again, as we talk about this, we're looking in the Old Testament. We're looking back where, again, Moses brings the law and the people are to obey the law of God. And today, we're not under the law, so we need to recognize that part, but also we're supposed to still obey the moral codes and the law of the Bible. And so it's important to, to distinguish that. You're, you're under the new covenant. Uh, Christ fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law and the prophets. And so now we stand in his perfect obedience because none of us could ever get to a point where you're like, yeah, the 613 laws, I got them all straight every day. Um, otherwise, obviously, you wouldn't need a savior. Uh, so we need a savior because we can't keep the whole law. And so God would send a Messiah, a savior who would keep the law perfectly and then die a perfect death for your sin, my sins, and so that we could walk in his righteousness. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's really the, the battle. We're talking about battles, and that's the battle that he decisively won. He defeated the powers of darkness on the cross. And when we talk about these battles, we, we already have a victorious leader in, yeah. in Jesus, the, the, the creator, the God of the universe. There isn't even a contest between the forces of darkness yeah. and, and, the, and God. Yeah. You know, devil is a created thing, so he can't stand a chance. And Jesus won the battle. And we're living in this in-between part where, like, we still, it's like, okay, the, the battle is won, but it's not yet complete until Jesus comes back. In Alpha, we talk about uh, Alpha a lot, but they give this example of the difference between VD Day in World War II and yeah. VE Day. And that was almost a year apart between the decisive victory uh, in Normandy and then when it was completely ended the war in VE Day. And we're kind of like in between there. There's kind of like this mop-up operations. And that's why where we go, we carry the kingdom of God with us. We bring healing. We bring love. We bring uh, the truth. And God uses us to spread his kingdom until he returns. But we don't have to strive because the battle is won. The victory is over. Uh, is already done. We don't have to worry that's about it. That's it. Come on. That's perfect. And uh, again, that's how we do it, right? That's we, we walk in his victory and we recognize that we have salvation because of what Christ has done for us. And so we already talked about, again, the third point was meditate on God's word. Again, huge yeah. digging into it, reflecting, pondering, uh, setting your mind on God's word. Um, and that's, we can't say enough of that, but we've said already enough for overtime. <laughs> and then the lastly is, again, seek after God's presence be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. So even today as Christians, we have to obey the same command, not to be discouraged, but to remain strong and confident in, in God's power and his presence with us. Because Jesus said that he will never leave us, he won't forsake us, but that he'll be with us until the end of the age. And so his spirit is with you. His spirit is with us. So thank you so much, Pastor Brad. And for those who are stay behind us, we will see you next weekend. We love you much. Bye-bye.